I can. Hello, and apologies. There have been huge technical issues I've been trying to fix, but <laughs> unfortunately, the, the 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 video just refuses to work. So yeah, we will I, have to have I to saw. make do. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I was going to say that you you look a little bit, you know, bl um, bleakish compared to <laughs> the last time I saw you. But <laughs> but glad to have you here anyway, and. If you want to see what Asmo looks like, just go ahead and Google him. <laughs> you will find some nice pictures. Yes, you should, you should be able to find me in LinkedIn quite, quite exactly. easy. Uh, exactly. Right. So, Asmo, if your slides are ready, then uh, you have this really, really long topic, rethinking API strategies, and then you can explain the next stuff yourself, I think. But digital integration hubs are a go. So, uh, Asmo, you are ready. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Marjukka, and hello, everyone. My name is Asmo Urpilainen, uh, representing a company called HiQ, and especially uh, the Friends integration platform within HiQ. And my role is basically chief product officer. So I'm responsible for all, all the technical nits and bits roadmap and the actual development of the of the platform itself. Uh, I have something like 15 years of experience in basically working nonstop with, with integrations and APIs, uh, both from uh, technical architectural development perspectives, uh, but also from, from business perspectives. So uh, requirements analysis, and then of course, kind of working with customers to, to try and solve their, uh, their issues and, and kind of direct them towards the, the new and better world <laughs> enabled by APIs. Uh, but basically today, uh, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was the concept of a digital integration hub that we are, of course, ex uh, enabling for our customers nowadays with our very own integration platform, uh, Friends. And I wanted to do just a super brief, maybe this sort of an advertisement before we jump into it, because this is important to understand that we need not only the kind of API capabilities and API management capabilities to enable the digital integration integration hub concept for, for our customers, but we also need more traditional integration use cases that work seamlessly together. And of course, now we are using uh, our very own friends integration platform to, to enable this whole concept. And just as a super brief reminder, basically what friends is, is a browser based enterprise integration platform as a service, which enables customers to basically develop any kind of integration and automation processes, as well as uh, apply API management functionality on top of those and act as this sort of an API platform in general. Uh, we use a low-code approach to basically speed up some of the development work with friends. And finally, we want to kind of provide as much automation for all the work that we, we create and, and, and build uh, using friends as, as possible. But that's it basically for the for the intro into into what friends is and what's the platform that we are of course developing and and using uh, using to to enable the digital integration hub for 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 various different customers uh, and maybe with a few slides here or a few words before we jump into the uh, actual agenda so the digital integration hub uh, about what I'm going to be talking about today so I'll run through kind of the uh, a little bit of a high level perspective on what the digital integration hub actually is, why you should care about that, what it enables for you, maybe some of the pitfalls you, you should consider if you're, if you're looking to implement something like a digital integration hub yourself, and then finalize the, the, the whole presentation into an actual customer showcase where we have successfully now implemented the, the digital integration hub concept and actually have been able to create all kinds of cool stuff uh, around, for example, this sort of customer 360 view and, and, and all of the kind of more, most modern way of, of actually thinking about APIs and how to interact with those APIs from an end user perspective. But all right, so jumping straight into it. So I have a slide here saying that think holistically about API management, question mark. And what do I mean by this is that uh, most of us, well, of course, here in the, here on API Day should be fairly well versed already on, on what API management actually is and what API management brings to the table and, and kind of generates extra value uh, for the APIs that we are using, and of course, all the governance and good stuff uh, that that's goes with basically traditional API management. But we'd like to think about API management 
as something a little bit bigger and API management being part of something a little bit bigger. And that something that's a little bit bigger is then the digital integration hub, where the ideology is now that rather than just using API management to uh, provide those standardized basic functionalities for all of our APIs, securing them, monitoring them, comp API composition, et cetera, et cetera, uh, but also connect and combine those API management capabilities with more traditional integration capabilities combined with a hyper fast storage to actually then serve data to the APIs that we are building on top of our digital integration hub. And that's the kind of key concept to, to, to cover today. And the reason why we should actually care about this digital integration hub, hub concept and ideology is that there are slight problems with just thinking about this pure API management and the kind of maybe old fashioned way of, of, of just buying an API management platform and thinking that will solve all of our kind of API problems in, in, in that sense. sense. And, and the problem with the kind of traditional pure API management approach is that it's super hard to accommodate the gradual change of all the systems of records and APIs that we are actually kind of managing via our API management. And uh, the reason that it becomes quite tricky to kind of enable this sort of a gradual modernization or gradual change for the systems and data sources we are using is that oftentimes all of the APIs and, and systems that we are gathering and managing with our API management tools are quite tightly coupled together which results in this sort of uh, this problem where if we take an example that we have a bunch of digital applications like our web shop or our customer portal or our let's say mobile mobile app and all of those are now actually consuming a lot of data and business functionality either calling uh, APIs directly or of course through through an existing API management solution to give those digital applications access to the data so the problem now becomes that if we want to change even one of those applications so meaning that we modernize the application completely we might switch it out to some something completely different or we might actually split the functionality into two separate systems or any sort of a change that happening on the kind of back end of the of the actual solutions offering offering the functionality and data and APIs means that now you will actually probably have to apply either a whole bunch of extra logic in your API management solution to take into account the changes now happening in your in your backend systems and kind of transform the backend systems uh, offered existing integration and API capability to match the new system or vice versa, match the old system. Because if you don't, that basically means that you will now have to apply a lot of work actually changing the digital applications and mobile apps, web, web shops, all of those things that are now relying on top of your APIs. And this, of course, slows down development, increases the risk of error, and is just cumbersome in, in many, many, many different ways. So not to worry, because Digital Integration Hub to the rescue, where, of course, what the Digital Integration Hub now wants to enable for you is this ideology that we kind of split the whole API thinking and kind of platform, in a sense, into three separate layers where we have our kind of API management slash API gateway layer uh, on the top, meaning of course that we secure our APIs, build those composite APIs and API products and, and all of that good stuff that comes with, with an existing API management solution. But it should also now seamlessly combine those API management and API gateway capabilities with the API runtime and the shared data storage that actually serves the data for the APIs to be used. So this kind of flips the API management, I don't know, capability or uh, paradigm a little bit on its head because rather than now actually managing and applying transformations for API calls that would actually be connected to our data sources, systems, microservices, existing APIs, we actually instead want, want to gather 
all of our kind of operational and, and master data pretty much from all of our systems and have a real time working copy of that data in this sort of a distributed data storage, meaning that now actually uh, we are kind of removing the restriction that oftentimes, for example, legacy systems uh, bring to the table where the legacy system might not be able to actually uh, follow up for, in terms of throughput, or uh, it might not be able to provide us with enough scalability in these sort of peak situations or peak load situations. So now instead of, of, of kind of tackling that problem in other ways, we are simply creating a simple layered architecture where each component, of course, the kind of integration and API runtimes should be something that we can containerize, distribute, scale up and down freely. But also, of course, the data storage should be something that we can now containerize, uh, distribute and share freely with the, with the different execution endpoints there. So this architecture actually now enables us to help out in a lot of different cases that uh, sometimes maybe make customers feel bad about using APIs or if customers have bad experiences with APIs. These are the kind of most typical reasons, uh, reasons for those. And of course, the whole ideology is quite similar to using some sort of cached component or or API caching uh, for the actual data. But the major difference being now that instead of, let's say, caching the API requests and responses directly, what we actually want to do is cache the underlining data, allowing us to now combine and interact with that data in a sense that even though, uh, so that it looks like that all of the data basically within that organization used by the digital integration hub was to be cached, uh, but also that allows us to uh, create different sorts of combinations of the cached data. So this will of course, uh, uh, kind of end up in the sort of end results where we can pretty much eliminate all performance and response time and of course latency issues that might come up with APIs accessing data in any backend systems and pretty much allows us for allows us to scale uh, the performance of our APIs in a pretty linear fashion and of course uh, replicate that functionality across multiple different uh, hosting centers or even continents or local versus cloud deployments and take all of that into account put it into this nicely packaged simple solution that's now thinking about how to provide the data in a little bit of a different manner and that's exactly what the whole digital integration hub is about and maybe to kind of further the ideology on what does this mean in kind of practical terms. Uh, so we in Friends actually create all of our APIs and the kind of processes in between uh, APIs, as well as, of course, the backend integrations using this process based approach. So I won't go into that much detail on, on what that actually entails. Uh, but a typical digital integration hub pattern might be that we now have our backend systems and data available for us. And the first step is always to keep that data up to date and act on ev events basically uh, provided by the systems and data to make sure that we have that real time copy of all of the data available for our APIs to consume. And the way that we do that with, of course, the Friends platform is that we are talking about a concept that, that we came up with called data pumps. And the data pumps are typically these sort of more traditional integration processes whose only job is basically to detect when there's a change in the backend systems data or or the data sources and update the shared storage or the uh, or the shared storage or the data storage layer so that then the APIs uh, above it and of course the API gateway even above that is able to serve real time data and accurate data to our API consumers. So you can think of the data pump kind of being the, the one which actually uh, makes sure that the data storage always has the most 
a recent copy of data available. And here is just a super simple uh, example of how we would do that for a product data uh, data set here <laughs> using a product information management system, where we can pretty much just, for example, check every 60 seconds, have any new products been created? And if so, we'll simply synchronize the data storage to reflect that new product or product update functionality. And now, of course, the, the, the top layer on top of this. So if we have the bottom layer, which is the data pump, and we have the data storage layer, which is, of course, now the middle layer, what about the APIs themselves? So if we want to use friends to actually expose the APIs as well uh, to the outside world and not only the data pump process, we'll use exactly the same process-based approach uh, to actually now define how we are serving that had that data from the data storage to our API consumers. And in this case, uh, it's a pretty simple uh, simple API where we just return all of the data that we have available for our simple one, one simple product ID that of course the, the user is now curing, curing us from our, our API, API gateway and API management management side. So this ideology, so the digital integration hub is pretty well kind of covered and explained using this, this slide where the bottom layer keeps the data up to date and the top layer then has all the logic and com uh, composition orchestration on how to now serve that data, how to combine that data, how to, for example, limit access to certain data sets based on the identity of the consumer of the data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And here we actually need to use something visual. So this might be, for example, the low code approach here in Friends, but it could be something else because a lot of rules and business logic will have to be created in both the API layer and the data pump layer and to allow this sort of understandability between two, these two different concepts is, is of course what we are kind of trying to achieve here uh, with friends. And maybe moving on here from to, to the actual showcase then. So uh, pretty recently, I, I, will enc I, will, I will first of all encourage everyone to go ahead and download this levy.ski application. So uh, we here at IHiQ actually uh, re rebranded and recreated the whole kind of Levy, Levy, Levy Alpine uh, experience. And what we were actually trying to achieve uh, here with, with, with Levy was this sort of a customer 360 approach where all the possible data from, let's say, restaurants and hotel bookings and uh, ski equipment rentals to uh, the actual, let's say, uh, snow cannons and different sorts of weather measurement posts that exist here in the in the ski resort. All of the data that we just have, that that we have available should be covered into this one unified business platform. So that would be the digital integration hub, and then we can present that data in this sort of a nice, well, state of the art three D model. <laughs> modeled representation of the of the levy resort but the from our perspective here on the kind of api days we are not that interested on the actual mobile application itself but on what's actually happening behind the scenes so this is a great example of of, of why you need to have a digital integration hub in some cases is that for example if we take the techno alpine snow guns which are actually providing all sorts of measurements about weather, uh, humidity, uh, possible uh, air pressure, et cetera, et cetera. And we would like to now, of course, store and display that data uh, through the digital integration hub to the actual end user. So what we've created here is then a data pump process to actually connect to all of the different IoT snow guns and download the kind of latest measurements uh, as frequently as possible. But unfortunately, snow guns are not the most reliable devices in the world from a net network connectivity perspective. So we might have a snow gun that's offline a couple of hours a day, or it might might not be offline for it might be offline for. Uh, a few minutes here and there. So it's really, really unreliable to create these direct connections to the actual snow guns. So now we use the data pump and the digital integration hub concept to first get as much of the IoT data from the snow guns as possible. 
and then try and serve it in real time to the consumer of the application uh, in the form of an API that's now basically retrieving the closest bus possible <laughs> weather measurement to the slope that the user is actually in. And of course, then tries out, there's a little bit of logic and intelligence there on how do we actually now present the temperature for, for example, that particular snope that's actually coming from the, from the IoT device of the, of the snow gun. So this is a really, really nice example from on, on how we actually now use the digital integration hub as a whole to actually get all of our data from a CRM, IoT, open data, web shops, point of sales, and even a loyalty program that what we created from scratch using, using microservices is now included in the data storage and data pump concept. And now we basically offer all of the needed uh, functionality in the form of open APIs uh, to the actual mobile application. And of course, other consumers of that data that are not the application itself. And everything is then of course secured using a third party identity management solution, which in this case, I believe is Azure uh, Active Directory. But all right. Uh, I still actually have three minutes of time left. I was a little bit faster than, than anticipated, but that was my last slide. But maybe as a slight recap on what the whole digital integration hub concept is about, it's about actually grabbing a copy or real time copy of all of the data we want to utilize to that shared hyper fast storage so that then we can actually scale that storage kind of like we can scale microservices and then we actually want to build the apis on top of that scalable storage so that then they can be scaled and deployed anywhere and then of course finally we'll just provide that uh, api management and api gateway on top uh, to actually just allow us uh, connectivity and access uh, to the data that we are gathering using the digital integration hub concept hey thank you osmo actually we had that a uh, few minutes for questions so <laughs> really oh, great right, that yes. you had that <laughs> reserved uh actually we have peter uh or peter from sverige here uh asking that in a brownfield setup where they there might be uh several systems that even do database to database integration and how do you ensure that the cache is consistent even though databases and legacies are updated from the site? Yeah, so that's of course where we need to have that kind of more traditional IPaaS or integration platform functionality uh, where we are able to detect or, or use different sorts of functionalities to detect those changes. So a simple pattern there might be to just query, for example, the uh, whole contents of the database and then we'll keep on kind of polling and curing. And of course, we can kind of detect when there has been a change in that data and we use that data pump process to model out all of the needed logic to keep everything up to date good and and uh, then there's another question some legacies also have heavy business logic included simply lifting data to a data store might break integrity of the data how is that solved yeah the whole point here is to try and actually uh, introduce uh, much more loosely coupled components because uh, and this is the, the reason that of course if there is business logic built inside the the legacy system we are kind of back in the on the track that we need to actually uh, model out that similar logic here on the data pump level but if there is a, let's say a, a core banking system or or something like that then it might not make sense to utilize a digital integration hub in in all possible scenarios scenarios, like I said, and this mm -hmm. solves a lot of issues for many cases, but it's not the end all be all answer for 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 all all API needs. And for example, the levy case is a nice showcase of, of those uh, features and functionalities that you can enable and, and can benefit with this uh, digital mm -hmm. integration hub approach. And, and I, I love the digital integration hub and name because I used to have that problem with my customers when I was drawing something like this on an architectural uh, uh, presentation. And I, I had to basically call it a thing <laughs> because it wasn't the API management alone. It wasn't the and it wasn't uh, just data storage. So I, I ended up calling it a thing because of 
of a lack of a better name. So thank you for that. And there are a few questions uh, in the chat. Alastair has one, so maybe you could go ask more. Somebody from Haiku could go and, and maybe answer those. But we are having the next 